the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. Practical Psychology for Today. Featuring the works of Idris Shah, voiced by David Alt. Welcome to the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. In this edition of the podcast, we will hear selections from Wisdom of the Idiots by Idris Shah. This audio is made available by the Idris Shah Foundation. Full Up A man came to Bahud in Naqshband and said, I have travelled from one teacher to another, and I have studied many parts, all of which have given me great benefits and many advantages of all kinds. I now wish to be enrolled as one of your disciples, so that I may drink from the well of knowledge, and thus make myself more and more advanced in the Tarika, the mystic way. Bahudin, instead of answering the question directly, called for dinner to be served. When the dish of rice and meat stew was brought, he pressed plateful after plateful upon his guest. Then he gave him fruits and pastries, and then he called for more pilau and more and more courses of food, vegetables, salads, confitures. At first the man was flattered, and as Bahudin showed pleasure at every mouthful he swallowed, he ate as much as he could. When his eating slowed down, the Sufi sheikh seemed very annoyed, and to avoid his displeasure, the unfortunate man ate virtually another meal. When he could not swallow even another grain of rice, and rolled in great discomfort upon a cushion, Bahudin addressed him in this manner. When you came to see me, you were as full of undigested teachings as you now are with meat, rice, and fruit. You felt discomfort, and because you are unaccustomed to spiritual discomfort of the real kind, you interpreted this as hunger for more knowledge. Indigestion was your real condition. I can teach you if you will now follow my instructions and stay here with me digesting by means of activities which will not seem to you to be initiatory, but which will be equal to the eating of something which will enable your meal to be digested and transformed into nutrition, not weight. The man agreed. He told his story many decades later, when he became famous as the great teacher Sufi Khalil Ashraf Zada. Chaki and his uncle It is related that a young disciple of Baba Shaki was sitting in the hallway of his house when a man arrived and said, Who are you? The disciple answered, I am a follower of Baba Chaki. The man said, How can Chaki have followers? I am his uncle, and I would have known if he had. As to his being a Baba, you have been misinformed, my child. Chaki's uncle stayed in the house after that for many years until he died. He refused to enter the assemblies of culture held by the Baba, and he could never credit that Chaki was a Sufi teacher. I have known him since he was a child, he said, and I cannot see him teaching anything, because he was never able to learn anything. Even after Chaki died, there were many people, some of them frequent visitors to his house, including merchants with whom he had business dealings, who did not believe that he was a saint. Yunus Abu Aswad Kamali, the theologian, spoke for some of these when he said, I knew Chaki for thirty years, and he never discussed higher things with me. To my mind, such behaviour is impossible to a learned man. He never tried to describe his theories and he did not attempt to make me a disciple. I only heard of his supposedly being a Sufi through the butcher. The Prisoner of Samarkand Hakim Iskandar Zaramez and Abdul Wahab al-Hindi were passing the corner of a large house in Samarkand one day when they heard a wild cry. They are torturing some poor wretch, said El-Hindi, stopping and standing still as the cries increased. 
Would you have the suffering eased? asked Zaramez. Naturally, as a wali, a saint, you can surely do it if there be God's permission. Very well, said the Hakim, and I shall demonstrate something. Zaramez moved five paces away from the corner of the house. The cries stopped. You withdraw, and the tumult ceases. Assuredly I have always heard that it is the nearness to the afflicted person which assuages pain, said Al-Hindi. The Hakim smiled but said no more, making the sign which among the Sufis signifies, a question may have no answer at a certain time because of the state of the querent. Many years later, when Al-Hindi was in Morocco, he listened to a dervish relating his experiences to a group of students one night in the closed city of Maula Idris. Among other things, the dervish said, On such and such a day of the month of Ramadan al-Mubarak, so many years ago, I was seized as a vagrant because of my apparent poverty and meagre appearance. I was left in a stone-built cell at one corner of the outside wall of the Qazi's house, pending judgment. This was in the northern vicinity of Samarkand. I had been contented with my lot and sitting in silent contemplation when I felt, quite unmistakably and from outside not far away, the presence of a saint. I started to howl and shriek and to throw myself about because a power was upon me and because I could not escape however much I wanted to approach him. Then I felt that he had moved away as if disturbed by my clamour. I tried to let him come near again by letting myself become as slack and silent as the night. The sheikh of the dervish circles said, Your experience could have instructed you that people are most profoundly affected by baraka, or spiritual power, when for all apparent purposes it is beyond their reach. The wali was teaching you this, even though you were in prison and he may have seemed to outside observers to be doing something entirely different, or even nothing at all. El-Hindi relates, This occasion was the beginning of my real understanding, that it is not wonderful that people have spiritual experiences. What might be wonderful is that so few people have them. What is certainly more wonderful is that instead of learning from them, they worship the experience and count it as something which it is not. The Book in Turkey A would-be disciple went to Bahudin. The master was surrounded by thirty of his students in a garden after dinner. The newcomer said, I wish to serve you. Bahudin answered, You can best serve me by reading my risalat, or letters. I have already done so, said the newcomer. If you had done so in reality and not in appearance, you would not have approached me in this manner, said Bahudin. He continued, Why do you think that you are able to learn? I am ready to study with you. Bahudin said, let the most junior murid, or disciple, stand up. Anwari, who was sixteen years of age, rose to his feet. How long have you been with us? asked El Shah. Three weeks, O Murshid. Have I taught you anything? I do not know. Do you think so? I do not think so. Bahudin said to him, in this newcomer's satchel you will find a book of poems. Take it in your hand and recite the entire contents without mistake and without even opening it. Anwari found the book. He did not open it but said, I fear that it is in Turkey. Bahudin said, Recite it. Anwari did so. And as he finished, the stranger became more and more affected by this wonder, a book being read without being opened by someone who did not know Turkey. Falling at the feet of Bahudin, he begged to be admitted to the circle. 
Bahudin said, It is this kind of phenomenon which attracts you. While it still does, you cannot really benefit from it. That is why, even if you have read my Risalat, you have not really read it. Come back, he continued, when you have read it as this beardless boy has read it. It was only such study that gave him the power to recite from a book which he had not opened, and at the same time prevented him from groveling in wonderment at the event. Beggars and Workers It is related of Ibn al-Arabi that people said to him, Your circle is composed mainly of beggars, husbandmen and artisans. Can you not find people of intellect who will follow you, so that perhaps more authoritative notice might be taken of your teachings? He said, The day of calamity will be infinitely nearer when I have influential men and scholars singing my praises, for without any doubt they will be doing so for their own sake, and not for the sake of our work. Unaltered Nawab Muhammad Khan, Jan Fishan, was out walking in Delhi one day when he came upon a number of people seemingly engaged in an altercation. He asked a bystander, What is happening here? The man said, Sublime Highness, one of your disciples is objecting to the behaviour of the people in this quarter. Jan Fishan went into the crowd and said to his follower, Explain yourself. The man said, These people have been hostile. The people exclaimed, That is not true. We were, on the contrary, doing him honour for your sake. What did they say? asked the Nawab. They said, Hail, great scholar. I was telling them that it is the ignorance of scholars which is often responsible for the confusion and desperation of man. Jan Fishan Khan said, It is the conceit of scholars which is responsible quite often for the misery of man, and it is your conceit in claiming to be other than a scholar which is the cause of this tumult. Not to be a scholar which involves detachment from the petty is an accomplishment. Scholars are seldom wise, being only unaltered people stuffed with thoughts and books. These people were trying to honour you. If some people think that mud is gold, if it is their mud, respect it. You are not their teacher. Do you not realise that, in behaving in such a sensitive and self-willed manner, you are acting just like a scholar, and therefore deserve the name, even if it is an epithet. Guard yourself, my child. Too many slips from the path of supreme attainment, and you may become a scholar. This podcast is copyright 2016, the Idris Shah Foundation.